Okay, so now um, I'm going to be answering some questions from um, Statistics 1, January 2019, IAL paper. Um, I'm going to start with question number one, about Venn diagrams and probability. It says, the Venn diagram shows the probability of a randomly selected student from a school being in sets L, B, and C, where L represents the event that the student has instrumental music lessons, B represents the event that the student plays in the school band, and C represents the event that the student sings in the school choir. P, Q, R, and S are probabilities. Okay. Select a pair of mutually exclusive events from L, B, and C. Okay. When events are mutually exclusive, they cannot be they cannot take place at the same time. Okay, so any circles which do not overlap at all are mutually exclusive. Well, there's nothing common between them. There can be nothing common between those two circles. So we can see that B and C are mutually exclusive because there's no overlap whatsoever. There's nothing in common between B and C. So we can say B and C is the answer here. B and C. Okay, you can see L and B have something in common. We can see L and C have something in common. Okay, but B and C have nothing in common. All right, that's a pretty simple first question. Part B it says, given that the probability of L is 0 0.4, the probability of B is 0 0.13, the probability of C is 0 0.3, and the events L and C are independent, find the value of P. Okay, first of all, let's just look at what this means. When the events, when two events are independent of each other, that means the probability of L intersection C is going to be the same as the probability of L times the probability of C. When they're independent, that's true. Okay, so I know the probability of L times the probability of C is equal to the probability of L intersection C. Okay, so let's have a look. That was, that's going to be basically P. So we're going to find the value of P, all right? So we can do that using this information, okay? We've just basically worked out. P is the intersection between L and C. So the probability of L times the probability of C is going to give us P. So that's going to be the probability of L is 0 0.4 times the probability of C is 0 0.3. That's going to be 0 0.12. Okay, you can confirm that if you wish. We have 0 0.4, 0 0.4 times 0 0.3, 0 0.12. Okay, so that's the answer, 0 0.12, that's the answer for part B. And part C, find the value of Q, the value of R, and the value of S. Okay. So now, I know that this part here is now 0 0.12, okay? I know the probability of all of L and the probability of all of um, R, um, all of C, sorry. So we can work out what R is, okay? Because we know that uh, the, the probability of, um, we know that R is equal to, basically, um, the probability of C, which is 0 0.3, minus the probability of the intersection, which is going to be P, which is 0 0.12. So R, I'll just write everything up here because I can see what's going on. So R is 0 0.3 minus 0 0.12. Let me just write that properly. Okay, that gives me 0 0.18. Okay, that's R. Okay, so that's now 0 0.18. Okay. For Q, we know that the probability of L is 0 0.4. So Q is going to be 0 0.4 minus 0 0.13 and minus 0 0.12. Okay, because you're going to have these three together give you L. So we know these two, so we subtract them from Q, from the whole thing of L. So you've got 0 0.4 minus 0 0.13 and minus 0 0.12 which gives you 0 0.15. So Q is equal to 0 0.15. So we've got R and Q. It says find the value of Q and R and S. 
and S, basically now we have um, all of these. We've got everything here. We know what Q is. That's 0 0.15. Okay, so S is going to be 1 minus the probability of L union C of all of these. Okay, so it's going to be 1 minus, and you have 0 0.15 plus... Zero point one five plus zero point one three plus zero point one two plus zero point one eight. Okay, so it's basically going to be all of L plus zero point one eight. Okay, so you're going to have one minus all of L, which is zero point four. Okay, all of L, which is zero point four. Plus you got 0 0.18 and that will give you 0 0.42 is S okay so S is equal to 0 0.42 so we can say that Q is 0 0.15 and R is 0 0.18 and S is 0 0.42 that's part C done then part D it says a student is selected at random. Okay, so this is 0 0.42. Okay, student is selected at random um, from those who play in the school band or sing in the school choir. Find the exact probability that this student has instrumental music lessons. So they are selected from those who play in the school band. So let me just highlight those areas. They're selected from these people and those who sing in the school choir and these people. That is like the sample space that we are considering. Okay? We're not considering the ones that are um, taking, what's L stand for again? That have instrumental music lessons. Only those who do that and, and also are in B. Okay? So find the exact probability that this student has instrumental music lessons. Okay, so exact means as a, you know, exact fraction, or, you know, exact decimal, but not rounded. So what we need to do is we, we got our sample space is basically the probability of B plus the probability of C. B union C. That's our sample space. So it's 0 0.13 plus 0 0.12 plus 0 0.18. Okay, that's what we're going to be considering as our sample space. So you're going to have 0 0.13 plus 0 0.12 plus 0 0.18. Okay, and we want to only consider those people, okay, who are, okay, who have student, okay, so we want to find out of these how many of these. Okay, um, these people have instrumental music lessons. We're at 0 0.13 plus 0 0.12. These are the pupils that have instrumental music lessons, which is L, out of the total. So it's 0 0.13 plus 0 0.12. So that fraction should give us the probability that we need. So we got 0 0.13 plus 0 0.12 divided by 0 0.13 plus 0 0.12 plus 0 0.18 which gives us 25 over 43 that's the exact value leave it as a fraction that's the exact probability so there we have it there's the answer so it's the probability when it says basically the, what they're saying is we're only selecting from these that have that are in B or in C. So these are the students that we're picking from and we own, we want to find the probability that they have lessons, which is these two, okay, instrumental lessons. So that's it, that's the answer to that question. That's A, B, C and D done. Okay, I've, I've written them in these spaces because I could see the Venn diagram easily, although really you should do them in the empty spaces that you have below. 
Okay, that's question number one done. Thank you for watching.